Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, in this lecture I want to talk about the exercises at the end of chapter one basically give you some hints and explain to you why I chose these particular exercises and think they're important for you to do. Okay, so this exercise, problem set one, problem one, refers to three vectors that I've drawn in the figure below and I want you to add them up and multiply them by these particular scalars in this way. That is, find these particular expressions. This is kind of a rite of passage of the, for the geometrical point of view of, of vectors and vector addition and scalar multiplication. It's kind of the way people like uh, Galileo and, well, Galileo didn't do didn't know about vectors, but they did graphical constructions as well as Newton. They drew pictures, and this is um, a good a good exercise to get a feeling for what's going on. It's a little bit frustrating because you have to be careful in your uh, drawing with the right directions and links, um, and it will make you appreciate coordinate systems in the next chapter. Problem two is take any three vectors, not the same ones above. These are just general vectors, same ones in the figure above, and prove these laws, commutative addition, that's essentially the parallelogram construction we've already done, associative law for vector addition, and associative law for scalar multiplication, using just the graphical construction for addition and scalar multiplication. These are good exercises. And then, so two more distributive laws. And then in problem three, we want I want you to prove similar laws for related to the dot product or rules related to the dot product. And this is um, well, these are these are interesting graphical constructions, but you just use the graphical definition of the scalar product, and this should be fairly straightforward. Now, four and five are a bit more fun. So four is let A and B be two non-zero vectors, otherwise it's not interesting. Then prove that A plus the vector A plus B and the vector A minus B, these are perpendicular vectors. How do we know perpendicular, deal with perpendicular? Cross product. If and only if they have the same magnitude. Like I said, this is a fun one. If you like geometrical constructions. And then the last one is going to, this, this is going to play a big role when we learn about Kepler's work later on in central forces. Prove that the area of a parallelogram with the sides vector a and vector b we know from the construction that in what sense they form a par parallelogram is the magnitude of a cross b okay so these are the exercises um i actually enjoyed them when i did this the first time they're they're fun i like geometrical constructions and in the next chapter we're going to get down to coordinates and coordinate systems, and they're going to make a lot of cal calculations pretty algorithmic, and which is one of the reasons they're useful. Okay, that's it for today. See you next time for Chapter 2.